Hello everyone, welcome back to the session. In today's part of the session, let us discuss the concepts related to the disposal of the effluents onto the rivers and streams. In the previous set of the classes, you have come across the characteristics of the wastewater dealt in the model number 2 and in the disposal of the effluents onto the land there are various methods either irrigation over land or maybe through the infiltration procedure. In addition to that the disposal of the wastewater onto the water bodies has its own characteristics as well as the variations. When the conditions are favorable then you can go for discharging of the wastewater. If not, no, you need to follow or comply with respect to the federal rules as well as the regulations. Now, let me discuss what are the factors that are affecting the dilution process or how does the self purification takes place if at all in the case the wastewater is disposed into the rivers. Wastewater disposal can be either of the two types okay disposal either of two types one is disposal to the pipe outfall pipe outfall or disposal through the pipe diffusers these are the two methodologies normally adopted if at all in the case of the oceans or maybe onto the lakes also we have either any one of the methods of the disposal of the wastewater. Let us get to know the diagrammatic representation. You can see the picture here. Well, let me take a point for the disposal of the effluents. What happens in that conditions? If it is in the case of an pipe or an outfall conditions, consider a waste stream. This is considered as an upstream, downstream. If there is a disposal of the waste or the effluents that are released, that are released, normally at this passage or in instances, flow is taking in this direction, u is the velocity. The plume, we call it as a plume. The dispersion of the effluent tends to take place here at this position. Normally, this is the set of the dispersion taking place. This kind of an outfall, we call it as a pipe type of an outfall, normally provided at the bottom portion. Especially the bottom portion, pipes are covered. You need to look upon here in a careful manner. This is not like a usual part of the concepts, they are quite different. What happens here, if it is in the case of the bottom, the dispersion takes place in the form of the cloud nature, okay, like this pattern, you can observe it. This is the disposal condition, we call it as an disposal through pipe outfall. This is the condition, vast spreading or the mixing phenomena takes place but not in an effective manner. If at all in the case of the pipe diffuser means instead of a one single port of the pipe we have a small nozzles whose diameter is less than that of the pipe which are perpendicularly provided for the pipe that kind of the disposal we call it as disposal through the pipe diffuses. Let me take up the flow diagram for this.
we call it as a pipe outfall, pipe diffuser outfall. which involves both mixing both laterally as well as vertically. And how does the concentration of the load input it varies? either may be the concentration with respect to the mass loading condition if you take it as an example over a time flow period. Normally for a flow with respect to the time, if you take the flow with respect to the time, the flow tends to vary with respect to the time if it is in the continuous or maybe in the intermittent. So, this is in a continuous flow basis. If at all the flow conditions or the concentration with respect to the time, what happens? If it is in the case like an intermittent part, the loading tends to differ. The graphical representation of the loading will be like this. Suddenly there is a drop. Again there is a rise and again there is a drop. Like this you are going to get the curve. Okay. This we call it as the concentration with respect to the time. How does the concentration it tends to vary with respect to the flow conditions? I think in the characterizations, so the mixing of the wastewater is an important phenomena either in the case of the rivers or in the case of the streams where the amount of the water which is required for the dilution it mainly depends upon the flow characteristics as well as the concentration with respect to the time. So, if the flow as well as the concentration varies then the mass loading transfer concepts comes into the picture. What is the mass loading concept that is normally represented as mass loading is nothing but the product of the discharge with respect to the time as well as the concentration of the substances. This we call it as the mass loading. Either it may be in terms of an BOD or maybe in terms of a nitrate phosphate, whatever the critical parameters they are of the utmost importance. So, these kind of the variations if you come across in the diffuser phenomena where the dispersion takes place in the mixing in a complete system. Whereas, not in all the conditions need not be the complete mixing process to take place in a practical reasons because of the various conditions or the constraint. Either the flow tends to vary here or maybe the concentration, the flow velocity of the effluent we call it as a QE, the discharge of the effluent the flow condition there is a discharge conditions of the upstream and if whatever the discharge conditions on the downstream these are the factors to be considered. So, with this we have an another part of the equation when any, any discharge is let off into the outfall of the sievers it has to mix in a proper manner. If it is not completely mixed then it will lead to any of the health hazards. That correct mixing phenomena has to occur in order to go for the self purification process. If the discharge is from the pores and all along with respect to this length of the pipe across the river, the discharge will be treated to be more uniform and has a good clarity also. So, more uniform as well as the good clarity. So, if the discharge is taking place, how do I need to determine what is the concentration or if any of the central pollution control board has set the standards that when you are discharging the concentration limit has to be limited or it has to be reduced. BOD concentration initially of the raw waste water is 300 or 600 mg per litre. If it has to be disposed, it should be less than 
5 mg per liter. So in order to reduce the 5 mg per liter what kind of the treatment that you need to provide and how does the dilution process takes place. This is the one of the most important fascinating phenomena taking place in the rivers as well as in the stream conditions. Let us get to know mass discharge at the source or a point sources. Mass discharge at the point sources. Point source means where you can definitely identify the source of the pollution. Non-point sources of the pollution means if there is a series of the discharges taking place it is rather difficult to identify if it is beneath the surface of the waters and all. The pipelines are late and all. No, and it is a tedious task also to determine. Such kind of the conditions we call it as a non-point sources of the pollution which are rather slightly difficult to identify. If you could able to identify easily at the point sources of the pollution then you can control at the source itself only. Now for this consider a stretch of the river itself only. River is only the unidimensional flow conditions it is obtained. We assume in that particular conditions where Q. Let me consider here upstream as well as the downstream conditions. Upstream as well as the downstream conditions. Now if at all if I have a disposal of the effluents either from the treatment plant or from the industries and all taking place at the rate of the discharge is found to be QE and the concentration having SE. Here the rate of the flow is QU concentration is SU. Similarly downstream you need to determine what is the discharge of the downstream QD and the concentration is denoted as SD. If at all if there is a any of the tributaries coming across the flow type of the system then we also have its surrounding background concentration we call it as the ST and QT. Now how to determine if I wanted to determine the concentration of the downstream and what is the discharge at the downstream what kind of the formula that I need to apply. You need to apply the mass balance formula. The mass balance equation is mainly governed by the conservation of the mass that is the mass rate of substance in upstream mass rate of substance in upstream upstream plus mass rate added by outfall because what is the reason you have the BOD concentration or the DO concentration or the temperature itself only you have a background concentration in the upstream you have one set when the effluents are discharged either through the industries or the municipal wastewater treatment plants and all then they have also the certain discharge condition as well as surrounding background concentration what happens it tends to changes there is a rate of addition there is a rate of formation and transformation takes place and totally that is equal to mass of the substances immediately at the point outfall that is equal to mass of the substance present at the outfall we assume to be a completely mixed type of the system. The process governing the mixing is mainly due to the advection phenomena. Advection is nothing but the U. Based upon U, you have the Q because Q is equal to A into U or A into V. Therefore, it is dependent 
the discharge is function of velocity we call it as nothing but an advection also okay now for this same condition mass rate of substance the upstream added up we have at the rate of the substance at the downfall at the downstream at the downstream okay so at the downstream what is the concentration for this we need to have the mass rate is nothing but the product okay that you need to have it wft is equal to q into c so now mass rate it is added up what is that i need to find out at the downstream mass rate of the concentration of the upstream substances okay q u and s u plus rate of the substances getting added up that is q e effluents that are released plus if there is a flow in the tributary condition we have qt st that should be equal to qd and sd qd and sd so if the tributary where the portion of the river or a stream joining the main course of the drainage pattern or the basin it has a discharge so therefore there is a additional discharge concentration when there is additional discharge concentration how to determine the substances normally the qusu or qesc and qtst you have to determine it this particular thing can be determined through the aid of the mass balance equation earlier i have stated i want to determine what is the su so qusu is equal to sorry qd and sd is equal to q u s u plus q e s e plus q t s t and if i would need to determine the concentration that is s t is equal to q u into s u plus q e s e plus q t s t divided by q d where q d is equal to discharge at the downstream is equal to sum of the discharge from the upstream released by the effluent as well as the course of the discharge joining through this rivers it is making additional flow condition okay additional flow condition so qd is equal to background concentration of the upstream discharge of the effluents as well as the discharge coming from the tributary conditions this is how you need to determine the rate of the substances where qu is the flow in upstream flow in upstream flow in the upstream and su is background concentration of the substance background concentration of substance i'll take it here so this is how the interaction taking place and what about the qesc qe is equal to discharge of effluents from the treatment plant discharge of effluents from the treatment plant yes e is concentration of a substance from the treatment plant what about the qt discharge from tributaries and st is equal to concentration of the substance in 
tributaries. Therefore, the downstream concentration, what we call it as a QD or SD, we call it as a downstream concentration. It is mainly dependent upon upstream concentration as well as the disposal of the effluents or maybe the joining of the tributaries. This phenomena where you can see if there is a release of the pollutant, some amount of the water tends to mix this effluent making the dispersion. Later on, if the tributary is getting added up, much more process of the dilution takes place. That means the rate of the concentration reduces with respect to the time. They not be all the uh, substances because we have two types. One is a conservative as well as a non-conservative substances. Conservative substances always be at the rate of concentration does not changes over a period of the time. Only by the dilution only reduces. Whereas for the non-conservative substances it tends to decay if it is taken with respect to the time or maybe at a particular distances of a stretch that we go for considering it. The distances okay certain set of the distances. This phenomena we call it as a dilution or the self purification is mainly taking place based upon the release of the effluents and the mixing of all those effluents with the water thereby reducing the concentration. This we call it as a disposal of the effluents into the rivers and the streams through the dilution method or the dilution technique. What are the other factors mainly influencing the dilutions? The factors which are influencing the dilution are mainly or the sorry the self self purification they are mainly related to oxidation second one reduction atmospheric reaeration atmospheric reaeration fourth one it is related to the temperature sunlight and even the activity of the microorganisms okay sedimentation also So, these are the factors that tends to influence the self purification process. Oxidation, oxidation means the process of addition of the when the wastewater is let off into the effluents, they are mainly influenced by the aerobic bacteria which tends to oxidize the organic matter. That phenomena we call it as an oxidation process. Reduction process, the complex organic matter are further degraded or reduced into the simpler part of an organic compounds through the anaerobic set of the bacteria or we call it as a decomposes through the reduction. Atmospheric reaeration means due to the presence of some of the microorganisms which inhibit the photosynthesis process they tends to fix up the oxygen in the river okay or due to the dissolution of the gases taking place through the gas liquid interface exchange system the atmospheric reaeration takes place in a natural manner. Temperature, temperature is mainly gone by what it is nothing but the sunlight itself which tends to drive and here even the sedimentation whatever the solid contents that are getting discharged over it they also have an impact. If the sediments are deposited at the bottom some of the organic matters are also trapped there then aerobic condition some of the organic compounds are converted into simpler ones. Later on what happens the aerobic bacteria are much more getting replaced by anaerobic bacteria thereby whatever the oxygen content present in the water it tends to decrease over a certain period of the time or a stretch of the river and that is the critical point or the phenomena we come across as a oxygen sagging or the deficit that takes place.
for example if you are diagnosed with any of the calcium deficiency or any other thing that means the change or the rate of the concentration of the calcium content or maybe the hemoglobin if content is very much less in the body doctors what they do they advise it to improve it i means to add something so that it is completely balanced in nature for the body similarly here also whatever the waste water getting discharge that content has to either undergo dilution if not dilution means then there is a depletion the depletion of the oxygen content if there is a certain depletion of the oxygen content definitely the river is not suitable even for the fisheries also this happens in the case whenever there is a discharge of the waste water in the out outfall having higher ranges of the concentration and the lower volume of the water available because in the rivers and the streams if you take rivers are either perennial or non perennial perennial means the flow of the river is throughout the year non perennial only on a seasonal basis it tends to flow in other condition low flow conditions if you are discharging the amount or the volume of the water available will be quite less so amount of the treatment that has to be set up here or the degree of the treatment is based upon the characterizations and to analyze that whether at this stage of a time if the effluents are disposed onto the water the impacts are reduced or not otherwise huge negative impacts tends to showcase all over the natural water ecosystems or the water bodies this has happened in the case of the kaveri river itself only where you come across in the case of the upstream process consider like in uh, kur regions and all coffee pulp plants are available there the process water is letting off similarly at the shrirangpatna region some of the waste water are let off and they are joining this process induces more and more concentration instead of reducing the concentration if it is increasing the concentration then this part of the dilution process is not valid hence there is a provision to be made related to the discharge of the effluents and mainly related to the given conditions so this is how we come across in the case of the disposal of the effluents in the rivers as well as in the streams also so remember the formula it is very much useful and normally this formula is given as so q u s u plus uh, i want to know the discharge of the downstream q and s means q e s u and q e s e normally these are the things finally if i wanted to check the concentration at the downstream q u s u and q e s e divided by q where q is equal to what the discharge of the upstream added with the release of the effluent this is the formula we call it as the disposal through the dilution phenomena remember it is important when we have to solve for the street of the equation problems and all the fundamental aspect is very much essential okay i hope so you people have understood the part of the concepts later on we shall take up the numerical problems related to this finally in the next stages of the classes we shall learn what are the zones of the pollution how to recover what is meant by oxygen sac curve why it is necessary to analyze and then further we shall proceed for the street of fps so with this part of the class let me wind up and we shall continue in the next class thank you